Hello, it's me. I don't know why I, uh, I don't know, I don't know why I sounded aggressive, but I thought that was funny. Anyway, I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about, um, some shit. Yeah, so let's talk about my, my doctors. I want to tell you how, um, my doctors were at, 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 uh, specifically in the, the day that I saw my hormone doctor. So, like, on that day, because it's very interesting, I want to tell you, because I, I feel like it's a funny story, and I, it might, um, I don't know exactly, I mean, it might put some of you at ease, um, about, like, getting, a uh, transitional treatment, because, like, I, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's even for the best, because, like, I've, so far it seems like, I'm, like, exceptionally lucky in how easy this has been, and, like, I, I mean, granted, it's not even, like, done yet, like, we're, it's not even official, I, um, I still need to have a follow-up appointment, um, uh, and, yeah, like, um, it's, uh, <sighs> I'm sorry, uh, so, yeah, like, uh, it's, it, oh God, I'm so I'm, I'm stuttering. Okay, so it's just, you know, I don't know yet if it's guaranteed that I'll be able to medically transition, um, uh, especially, like, soon, but it looks like it, and the people who I have talked to, um, have been very cool about it. They've been very chill and very, um, yeah, so I'll get, I'll get into that now. So, on the day that I, um, went to meet my hormone doctor. Obviously, I couldn't see her right away, because that's never how it works with hospitals or clinics or whatever. This was a clinic. It wasn't really a hospital. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I met with a, uh, student first. It was like a, a medical student, um, because you, you often do meet with those, uh, when you go to, um, clinical settings. They are often, They'll ask you questions and stuff, and it's it's interesting, you know. And I kind of love that because I I get to help someone who's going to, um, you know, presumably end up helping other people. So it's like it kind of makes you feel important. It makes you feel like yeah, you know, just by just by um, going to the doctor or whatever, like I'm I'm doing my part, you know. I'm kind of helping, you know, or whatever. Um, yeah, and it's. <clears throat> It's always an interesting experience to, like, meet, um, people like that. You do get to meet a lot of people when you go to the, when you go to the hospital or when you go to a clinic, like, um, yeah, like, you just, it is, it's almost kind of a social thing, you know? Like, I, I, I kind of enjoy the socializing aspects of it, um, yeah, so... Because they will, they will sometimes be friendly, and this, this, um, uh, this student was very friendly. She was, um, I do not quite, I don't remember her name, unfortunately, but she was very friendly. She was so bubbly, like, and, um, nice, like, um, she was, she was a good listener. She would ask questions, and they were, they were interesting questions. A lot of it had to do with my mental health. And, um, some of it had to do with, like, my, my story, if you will, you know, my story as a, a queer person, you know, asking about, like, you know, um, basically, like, how did I discover who I am, and, um, when exactly, like, you know, what's the timeline, and, um, uh, also, like, uh, like, you know, what, also, like, she asked a little bit about, like, what's my sexuality, and the reason why that was relevant was because, like, um, things like pregnancy are, uh, kind of a, a thing to worry about in this context, because, like, um, um, <sighs> well, a lot of people, I guess, must think, like, because they, they made, the, both my, um, mo both the student and then later my doctor, um, they made an effort to clarify to me, they, they explicitly were like, this is not birth control, because apparently, I guess a lot of people think that, um, uh, 
testosterone is birth control. So, like, according to... <sighs> sorry, I have, like, hairs on my computer. According to the uh, paperwork that I was given, um, it does indeed make it, like, harder to get pregnant, but, like, not impossible by any means. Like, you can still get pregnant on um, testosterone, so... Yeah, like, even though it can, uh, decrease or, I guess, eventually stop your period, it will not, like, keep you from getting prego. So, yeah, like, um, um, so that is a thing. And, uh, yeah, that was why my sexuality came up, because, you know, if, if I preferred, um, girls, then... You know, it could st I could still hypothetically get pregnant because, you know, trans girls exist and everything. So, you know, there's a non-zero chance of me still getting pregnant. But, like, you know, uh, still, like, you know, obviously most people are cisgender. So, you know, yeah. But, um, anyway, like, um, or, of course, if I was, like, asexual or something, then... Well, not, uh, but then not, a not all asexual people literally have no sex. Sometimes you can be asexual and still have sex. Um, that's a whole thing, you know? So I just wanted to acknowledge that. But, um, yeah. So, there were questions asked. A lot of it had to do with my mental health. Like, you know, have you been, how have you been feeling lately? Have you ever tried to die on purpose? Uh, that's not funny, but, you know... Uh, the way I worded it was maybe a bit funny. Um, maybe. I don't know. Have you ever tried to purposely die? That's not how they worded it, but that's how I... That's... Yeah. Um, because I don't want to, like... Uh, I don't want to, um... You know, trigger anyone, but... Um, yeah. So this, 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 uh... Fucking... <laughs> student. This student was very sweet. She, um, just quite bubbly, very smiley. She would make a little bit of small talk, but not too much, you know, nothing too distracting or anything. And she would connect with me. Like, I felt very safe with her. I felt, like, just a slightly, just slightly, um, not comfortable, like, slightly uncomfortable with talking about more serious stuff with her. Um... And that's not really her fault or anything. I mean, I guess you could argue that maybe it is, but I don't know. It was just like, since she was so chipper and everything, and so sunny and everything, just just beaming, I felt a slight um, discomfort with telling her... <sighs> sorry, hair on my computer again. Telling her um, the dark things, you know. And there was a lot to, to talk about, because especially recently I have not necessarily been in the best place. I mean, since then, like, since that day, things have gotten better for sure. A lot of good things have happened in my life. Um, or, like, things to look forward to in the future, mostly, you know? Things that, like, you know, things are looking up for me, you know? Um, so, yeah, but at the time, it hadn't been quite so simple. I had been going through kind of a lot. And, um, you know, I still kind of am. I mean, but... Yeah, but anyway, so I did have some dark things to talk about, and that, I wasn't, I wasn't the most comfortable because I just, she was so happy, and when you're around a really happy person, you don't want to, like, bother them. So, yeah, that was basically the only complaint I would have about her, but, like, she still, she wasn't mean or anything at all, like, she still was very compassionate and received the information quite well, so, um... Yeah, I, I do enjoy her. And then, interestingly, um, after that, after I interacted with her and everything, um, then, uh, um, oh, and also I guess I should add a few things, like, I should tell you that, um, she ran a few tests on me, like, some tests, uh, she tested my hearing and my balance, like, uh, well, not really my balance, per se. Like, she tested whether or not certain things would happen to me at certain positions. Like, you know, she would make me do very specific movements, and then she'd be like, do you feel dizzy? And then, like, she would be like, okay, look at this thing while you're moving in this specific way, and I'm gonna see if your eyes shake. And that's something that's very interesting to me, because, uh, I do have kind of this thing where my eyes will, like, shake around, like, like, like... I don't know if you can see it. 
I'm trying to make it happen right now. This is a little disturbing. So yeah, um, I don't know if you could actually see that on camera, but like my eyes did do a shaky thing, like really quickly back and forth, kind of like vibrating. It's okay if you can't see it, but it is a real thing. Apparently it's like kind of a medical issue, I guess. Um, but when she ran the test that, you know, checks for that, my eyes didn't shake. And that might be a good thing. Like, my eyes actually haven't had that issue in a long time. Like, it was a thing that happened to me more when I was a little kid. And, well, not just a little kid, but as a, you know, up to, like, being a tween and stuff. But it hasn't happened recently, and I'm not sure why. But that's alright, you know? It, it was never, like, a big deal, um because it would only last a few seconds, but it was a little bit weird, and, uh, I guess kind of annoying, but maybe it's a, a sign of, like, a bigger issue, I'm not sure, um, but there must be a reason why she tested for it, but then, yeah, I, I told her that I have had that happen to me before, so, you know, it was noted and everything, so, yeah, sometimes I wish that, um, doctors would elaborate more on, like, what they're checking for, you know, because I think sometimes they're just a bit too mysterious about what they're doing, like, I'm always curious to know what's going on, you know? Anyway, um, um, yeah, and I, I told her about how I, I suspect I might have a bit of tinnitus, because, um, I am on two antidepressants, I take two antidepressants every day, that is Wellbutrin and, uh, uh, Prozac, so, um, yeah, like, um, since I'm on those, and, like, yeah, since I'm on those, I do have a higher risk of getting tinnitus, because antidepressants can cause it, and I have been experiencing symptoms of tinnitus, like, um, ringing in my ears, and see, ringing in your ears, um, it doesn't, for, for it to count as tinnitus, it doesn't have to be constant, I used to think that it did, but apparently it can be intermittent and still be tinnitus. And it has been intermittent for me. I've had intermittent ringing happen, and it's, um, it's a little startling because, it, like, it's, it's not as if it's so loud that I can't hear anything, but it's loud enough that it kind of catches me off guard. It just happens randomly, and it's so distinct and kind of unnatural sounding that it feels almost like a sensation going through my head. It's like kind of a wave of sound going through in, I hear it in my head, you know? It's kind of weird. So, um, yeah, but, you know, it's not like terribly disrupting my life or anything, but, you know, it is something you want to get checked out because there are cases where tinnitus can lead to hearing loss, and I don't want that. That would suck ass if I couldn't hear. Do you guys know that, like, deaf people, um, like, rarely, or I don't know about rarely, but by and large, they just, they don't learn how to read lips. That is not the majority of deaf people. Most deaf people can't read lips. They can only sign. So, yeah, obviously that's, that would suck so much because that just limits your ability to socialize with people. Like, most people don't know sign language, so... It could be such an isolating experience, man, just not being able to communicate with most people, and it would just, it would disrupt life so much. I, I really don't want that to happen to me. Um, and yeah. So, yeah. But apparently, most tinnitus doesn't result in hearing loss or anything or whatever, so, I don't know. I, uh, we'll just have to see. But yeah, um... Anyway, I'll, I'll now talk about the doctor. Um, now, my my uh, my hormone doctor's name is Dr. Fliegen, I think. And it's, it starts with a P. There's like a silent P. Like, it's not a P-H. It's a P and then an F. And then, you know, L-E-E-G-E-N, I want to say. I think so. So that's Dr. Fliegen. And um, I kind of like that name, actually. Like, I think it sounds cool. I don't know. Um... It's, it's very unique, and I like the silent P. Um, so yeah, like, she quite uh, contrasted the, uh, the, the student. Um, and by the way, once Dr. Fliegen came in, the student was still, like, shadowing her. She was still in the same room as Dr. Fliegen um, and, and me, you know, because, like, you know, she's a student, she's learning, so... Yeah, but it was asked, it was asked that... Um, 
whether or not I would be comfortable with um, a student in the room. So yeah, like consent was um, uh, prioritized, and that's good, you know, because maybe you don't want somebody in there, you know. But I was okay with it. I like contributing and helping everybody, you know, as much as I can. Um, not to say that, like, you're a bad person if you don't want somebody shadowing you in the room and all that. Like, if you don't want a, uh, a, a student uh, in there with you, that's fine, you know? I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad. But anyway, um, so Dr. Fliegen was, uh, she contrasted the student in that um, she was quite serious, but not in a bad way. I was slightly um, intimidated by her at first because of just how, like, kind of stone-faced she was. But as I as we talked, it became evident that like she's not mean. She's not like a hard ass. She's just very professional. She takes her job very seriously, as she should. Um, you know, as you know, especially because like she is a hormone doctor in Alabama in today in like twenty twenty four. Like trans issues are uh, they're like very big in the public eye. Like. I mean, it's never been easy to be trans, but, like, you know, I'm not gonna say, like, it's harder than it's ever been, but it's, like, we're much more visible than we once were, and that can make it, like, very dangerous in its own way, like, in it's, yeah, like, we're no longer a kind of mystery, we're now, well, I mean, people still don't understand us, by and large, but we're, we're seen, and that can be, that can be scary, that can be a big deal, it we're we're now very political. We've all I mean everything's political, but it's a, it's extremely politicized now. Like the political aspect of it has become very much um um significant to people, you know. And that that's it kinda sucks, you know, it kinda sucks. So yeah, I was glad to have a doctor that was so um so serious because like you do need that when you're de when you're dealing with this, but she wasn't boring and she wasn't mean. Like I think she did, in fact, laugh at one point during the conversation we had. Like I don't remember what we were laughing about, but it was, you know, I'm just saying. Like she's not, she's not like scary, you know. She's still chill. She's still human and everything, but she's just very professional for the most part, and that was great. And um. When I think about it, I think she might be, like, my favorite doctor so far, and I've had a lot, you know. Um, like, as far as medical professionals that I've been, you know, that I've dealt with, um, I've had a lot over the years. Um, doctors, nurses, uh, therapists. So she's probably at the top of the list. She's probably my favorite because uh, I actually did click with her a lot, and I felt like I was in really good hands, like, um, and she made clear that she doesn't want there to be a lot of hoops to jump through when it comes to the, 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 um, what's it called? The process. She didn't want it to be a whole big deal where you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get what you need, um, to be happy and healthy and everything, you know, cause that's, that's what transition is all about. It's like, it helps you, um, mentally and everything. And, it can be a matter of life and death for some people, you know? I don't- I wouldn't say that's the case for me. Um, I wouldn't literally, um, uh, commit die if I, um, if I didn't have it. But that doesn't mean that, like, it's not very, very, very important for me. Like, you know, it's not normal to, like, hear that someone doesn't literally need something to live and, like, do you know what I mean? Like, to hear, it's not, like, a correct response to be, like, oh, you don't need that to live, like, necessarily. Like, you could live without it. Okay, then, like, you shouldn't get it, even though it's, like, super important for your happiness. Like, and you would be significantly sadder without it. Like, because this is, like, a last resort. It would be an absolute last resort if I literally had to go without, um hormone treatment, it would be very, very, a very big deal. Like, even though I could find myself, uh, still going on with my life, still living, it would not be a fun life at all. It would not be, um, a good life. It would suck. I would be very sad. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> 
you know? And may I'm not, I'm, I don't even know. Like, I, when I say, yeah, I could live without it, I don't even know. Because, like, how do you know? My life has just begun. It has just begun. And I may think that, that I can, that I could handle everything right now, but this is just now. I've, I'm not really an adult yet. I don't have the sort, I just don't have an adult's life, so I don't really know what it would be like to not be able to, you know, be who I want to be and have the responsibilities and lifestyle that a grown-up has, so. Shit, dude. <laughs> Sorry, my computer just went black. I don't know why that happened. That was weird. That's happened before. I don't know what that is. It's alright, though. Camera's still on. So, yeah, uh... I, f I love Dr. Fleegan. I can't wait to meet her again. I think that our um, next appointment is going to be kind of soon. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. She's very nice. She's nice, you know, even though she's very serious. She's a very nice person, and I trust her immensely. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Yep. <laughs> I, want that, I just want you all to know that, like, even though, like... This can be really scary, and it's not always going to be an easy thing. That doesn't mean that it's going to be hard every single time. Like, not everyone has a terrible experience when it comes to, like, getting medical assistance with their transition. You can... You can, you can do it, man. Like, this is possible. It's, um... You know? I mean, I guess I, I can't... I can't guarantee that it's going to be possible for everybody... But I just mean, like, it's worth a try. If you really want this, and or if you really need this, then don't just say to yourself, like, oh, it's, gonna, it's just going to be too hard, I shouldn't even bother trying. No, like, if you can try, then you should, you know? You deserve happiness, you deserve a life that's fulfilling, you need to, like live your life to the fullest, I think, you know, safely, of course. Um, so, yeah. Um, just want everyone to hear that. Bye, guys. Love you.